Hey everyone, once again, it's Barry3D from the Iconics Podcast, and I'm here to do another unboxing video. Uh, this time we're starting off uh, this unboxing with another Superpowers collection. I'm just kind of going through these bit by bit as I come out and I get my hands on them. As you can see here, we are doing the Blue Beetle with the Bug. So this is the Ted Cord, or you know, Blue Beetle. So he was the second Blue Beetle, and he was created way back in November of 1966. He made his first appearance in the Atom, issue number 83. So in 1966 by Steve Ditko. So Steve Ditko has done a lot of my favorite properties over the years from Blue Beetle, Hawk and Dove, The Creeper, the list goes on. He, you know, you might recognize his work also from Spider-Man. Uh, you know, he, he had a distinctive style, Doctor Strange. So there we go. So now McFarlane has got it. He's doing a whole superpowers collection. He's released the Blue Beetle, which I think is kind of cool. And if you want to know where I get all these cool gadgets and toys, like Jack Nicholson said as a Joker to Bob in Batman 89. Very simple. Check this part out. CMD Store. Hey everyone, this is Barry3D from the Iconist Podcast, and I'm just letting you know where I get my toys from when you see me doing my unboxing videos. So there's a CMD store, they're located online. You can find that cmdstore.ca or .com. They do ship all over North America. So that's for Canadian and US. I'm not sure if they ship outside of that, but you can always ask them and see what they say. And their site is so cool because they're located in Ville saint Laurent, right here in Montreal, Quebec. You could just simply show up to the store during store hours, pick up what you want if you know what they have, uh, what you want. You can always check out their online store. Here's just a quick peek of what I'm looking around. You can place an order online, pick it up that same day. You can show up there and just pick up the order right away. Or if you're out of town like I am, at times you can just place that order and they will ship it out to you. They are super friendly, very open, and they have everything from Transformers to G.I. Joe to, ah, here we go, Blue Beetle, to DC superpowers, anything you can find, you they have it. And this is just a small piece of their collection. Fungal Pops, Dragon Zord Flute slash Knife, the Helmets from Star Wars, they have it all covered, X-Men figures. The, the, the list goes on and on and on. So because of this setup, this is why they're able to do what they do. They have it all uh, in there. And this is just a fraction of what they have on site. They do show up to a lot of conventions too. So you can always place orders or buy items from the comic book conventions when they're, they're in town. My brother was the one that told me all about this. So this is a store to really check out online one way or the other or their Facebook page and let them know you heard about them on, they heard about, you heard about them on the Iconis podcast through Barry 3D. So if you want to know where I get my toys from, this is it. CMD store. And I give a thumbs up. All right, everyone. So once again, I came out from CMD. As you can see, I did the walkthrough from CMD toys and Ted Cord was very much like Tony Stark that he turned around. And he was able to make that from scraps, like in a cave, like they said, right? So very reminiscent of that. What was really cool about this is that he turned around and he didn't have the armor like Iron Man, so to speak. But this is way back from November 1966. Steve Ditko, who was behind other properties like Hawk and Dove, Creeper. Uh, he's also worked on Spider-Man. He's worked on Doctor Strange. This is why Spider-Man and Doctor Strange have similar finger gestures when they're doing certain things. That was Steve Ditko style. Very, he, mo he made people move and jump around a lot. And just like, you know, Batman 89, where uh, the Joker turned around and mentions like, where does he get those wonderful toys from, Bob? This is what he did. So he's a genius. He was very seen as a serious character at first, and he worked and made the bug out of beetle, out of parts, car parts from a Volkswagen Beetle. Can you believe that? A Volkswagen Beetle is what led to the bug, henceforth why it's got its name. In my, I never saw anything true to that, but this is why I think it's got its name for very reasons. It's a giant bug. Now this bug also had inside its own computer, its own, you know, crime lab, uh, you know, stereo system, and he was able to interact with the world that way. So keep in mind, this is 1966. We're going back, it ain't like today, you know, which of course has gotten updated since over the years, he's had a Mark I, a Mark II. It got updated when he joined Justice League International with Maxwell Lord was kind of putting that team together and there was more humor on the team than anything else. So this is where this comes into play. Now, as you see before, I get all my stuff from CMD Toys and they ship all over the world. So, you know, please reach out to them, tell them you saw them on the Iconist podcast and then let them know that would be greatly appreciated. Also, like, subscribe and share. Always check out the channel. Don't let the channel be a secret. We're always doing these little things to interact with people. So as you can see here, the box itself, there's no windows on the box. This is what keep the price point down. I'm glad they did a vehicle. I wish they gave Blue Beetle his gun. If he gave him his gun, that would have been even a cool accessory for him to have. Maybe the line thought was, hey, we're not going to give him his gun because we are going to give him his vehicle. So 
you know, in lieu of one, you get the other one. Okay, I can get that logic. Now we can see here, very classic, this is Ted Cord. Now Ted Cord, when he started off, he made his first appearance in Captain Adam in issue number 83, I believe that was. Uh, 83, 86, those are the numbers that stick out of my head from Charlton Comics. And he was seen as a serious character, a serious character. He wasn't like the jokey, jokey guy that we got, wasn't the booster and gold team that we got years later when the, they cut together and, you know, and he kind of went with the character. So Charlton Comics came out. This one was, as I said, Steve Ditko, and then DC acquired these heroes. So they acquired uh, Charlton Comics, and with that, they got the Beetle, or sorry, Blue Beetle. They got the Question. They got Captain Atom, and they gave him a different look than what he was in Charlton Comics, and he was their heavy hitter in that time. So these are some of the characters they acquired. Judo Master. So here we go. So with all that being said, let's get down to the brass tacks of it. This is the figure that we got right now, and it's kind of cool. I like the, once again, packaging is simple, no issues there. You know, on the back of the packaging, you get a brief rundown of who he is. So, you know, archaeologist Dan Garrett discovered an ancient scarab in old Egyptian tomb that gave him superpowers, which he used to fight crime. He eventually retired and was succeeded by a brilliant Ted Cord who carried on the Blue Beetle legacy. True and not true. Uh, Garrett got into a situation and he ended up passing away. So this is why Ted was there on the island and he gave Ted the scarab to say, hey, carry on. And Ted was never able to access the magic or the science of the scarab. He didn't know what this was. So he just held on to the, that object as a memory and wanted to order, you know, honor Dan Garrett. So on the back of the packaging, you see here of this wave, it's got all the heroes, all the villains. We need more villains. And, you know, the two current ships, which is Brainiac ship and the, and the Blue Beetle bug. So let's get down to the brass tacks of it. And then, of course, what gets me on the Blue Beetle bug is, once again, the packaging is really cool, very simple, really long, really, really long. I think this is like longer than Superman's one. And what we see here is, as I call it, a dead giveaway, is we know, if you look at the back of this packaging, there was no booster gold that was on the back of this packaging no booster none whatsoever right but in a photo oops -ha, <laughs> oopsies oopsie doodle we clearly see that's booster gold there anyone that knows booster gold's colors can see it there you can see it from the back here that is booster gold so it's almost like they kind of gave you the hint of the blue and gold team was coming you have one you got to have the other so we're going to get into some quick things here. So one, we're going to open this up. Let's open this bad boy up and let's put it together real quick and see what we got. Now I'm going to try my best to save the packaging, but you know me, I always buy two. So a pretty solid figure. It's got some points of articulation like all the other figures that we've seen so far in this line. And you know, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to see some other stuff too uh, going forward in the future. So like I said before, we definitely need a Black Manta ship. Black Manta needs to have his own ship. I know it just came out and they're doing it as a Kickstarter thing and that's kind of cool. I wish they would just do it as a black label and release it to the people that want to get it instead of doing the Kickstarter thing. Uh, hopefully it reaches that and maybe they'll release it after in the future that way for everybody else because I've got Black Manta and I've got the, 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 the original run of Black Manta and I'm not, I got two of those and I'm not opening that one, those ones. Those ones seem to be classic uh, cases there so we're going to get down to getting down to see what's in the beetle ship and see what's going on with that put it together and give you a quick rundown all right so we got the legs that are in here simple enough as you can see it's, this is why the box is so long if they open these other flaps and then we're going to get the the mothership out haha <laughs> there we go so once we slide that out, it almost comes out in one piece. Presto, nothing else inside the box. Nothing else inside the box. We're good, sturdy, good enough. And I was able to open that without damaging anything else more. So the Blue Beetle, this ship was able to fly through the air, had anti-gravity. It was also capable of going underwater. Oh, all right, it's popping open. He was able to go underwater. And of course, with the upgrades, it added more stuff to it. It's not like the popcorn one that was given back in, you know, when the Blue Beetle movie came out, they gave out a popcorn uh, container that had bug. That was cool. And it was a little bit bigger from what we see. So now you can see here, 
the front of it without the legs, right? Uh, we have the inside. You see where the legs are to go. We got two seats, control panels. I'm gonna try to get as close there. Hopefully it doesn't blur too much, the camera. It's, it is what it is. And then underneath, we have his grappling cable that he'll, that clips in there. So you can pull that down and then hit the button and it snaps back up. So uh, Ted Core is about to go for a very fast ride if he's not secured on <laughs> properly. <laughs> it's like, ah, and Ted's in orbit. So here we are in North America. We always have to sit on when we drive on the left-hand side. If you're over in the UK, you know, the driver is on the right-hand side. So, you know, I'm gonna put them on this side because, you know, just for the simple fact of uh, this is where we drive, this is how we do. A little, little tough to get him in there, but uh, he fits, he fits pretty nice. Fits pretty nice in there at all. Maybe I'll have to kind of play around with the legs to get him more secure in there. But this is where this character is at right now, as you can see in here. And then of course, to release it is just to push the back here. So then we just gotta close the back. Snaps into place. We got the I Love New York sticker on here. <laughs> Once again, that's a, a that's a JLI reference, not a Car Charlton reference. So this is when he's with DC and part of the Justice League, sorry, Justice League International. That's the reference for the, the I Love New York because he got that sticker. And I can't remember the story if it was Boost that I put it on there or if he put it on there or if Killog would put it on there. But once again, there was a lot of jokes and someone can let me know the, the, the rundown of it. So we got the six legs and we have the antenna. Everything kind of snaps into place. And even though it might not look it, it is pretty sturdy. It is, it's pretty sturdy altogether. So, it, it, you know... Now see here, watch me, I want to turn around and do something foolish and then like, ah, oh, well, I guess I was wrong. So we've got the antenna that are in there, all said and done. Give you a better uh, view of it. So here we got the view from the front. Of course, you, and I like you can still see through here. So once again, you got the view from the front. You can definitely see the figure in there clearly. Room, got to pick up now a booster. Thanks <laughs> to get the blue and gold. And even if you got Kilowog, he can hang in the back. I wish there was more things in the back besides just the, the stickers, but the stickers are already uh, on there. As you can see, here we are from the side and from the back. So it was a very, once again, basic setup, but once again, fun. And why do you get these things? Because they bring back good memories and it's so cool to have them in the long run. So there we go. Once again, this is Barry 3D from the Iconis Podcast. Thank you everyone for tuning in and checking this out. I remember, this whole world was started by a pencil, a piece of paper, and lots of imagination. Keep on dreaming. We're out.